Hey guys, welcome to my newest video for today. For today's video, I am attempting to bring back this series that I have started multiple times on this channel and I never seem to follow through with it. But this is Tracy Talks TV. This is where I go through all the TV shows that I've been watching over the <clears throat> last couple of months and I've been watching a lot of um, TV shows these past few months. Like I've really gotten into binging TV shows and yeah, it's I've been loving it. It's because I think I've been just been in a TV slump the last well, probably realistically last 10 years, I've just been finding it really hard to really get into TV shows and based on what I've been watching, um, yeah, it's, I've more than made up for in the last couple of months. Admittedly, I did also have a lot more free time, um, so to watch these TV shows, but that's all I felt like doing was just when I, you know, got home from work or that, I just put on a TV show and just binged it, so... <laughs> Um, anyway, getting straight into the video, the first one that I have to talk about um, is Shetland. I w watched series 1 to 7 and it completely reignited my love of, for Douglas Henschel's and like um, for movies and his movies and TV shows and why I've been on a bit of a binge with that. So Shetland has become one of my favourite TV shows. I know he's leaving. Um, Douglas Henschel is leaving at the end of this, or like he's left at the end of this uh, series 7. There is going to be a series 8 with the rest of the cast returning and there's a new DI coming in so I will be checking that out but um, I'm probably just going to wait till the whole season's out because I really, I, I don't really go for watching weekly TV shows right now. Um, I think that's um, sort of why I sort of fell into a bit of a slump with TV shows. I was watching so many and keeping up with so many and I sort of um like it was becoming a bit of a chore to stay up, up to date with them and just sort of taking my time to work my way through it like an entire TV show. Um, I'm finding this working so much better now and yeah it's I've what made my way through so many shows and yeah it's um I love it. It's I've really missed just being able to get into a TV show, and Shetland sort of really kickstarted that whole uh, binge watching. I watched all seven seasons in about three weeks, <laughs> which um, admittedly they're on the short side because it's British, like a British crime drama. There's only six episodes per season, except season one, which has two, so it was very easy to get through it. Um, Shetland is a crime drama it takes place on the Shetland Islands and we sort of follow um to take like DI uh, Jimmy Perez and his team as they solve crimes in in the area and it's basically um the first two seasons follow uh the books because there's four books in uh by Anne Enclaves I think it's the author's name I have read the first book I just can't think of the author at the moment um and then from series three onwards, it follows um, a case a season. So each episode revolves around them investigating, like, the particular um, case that they're working on. So, um, but yes, this is, like, fantastic show. It does get very dark, um, probably from about uh, season three onwards. Like, it does deal with some very dark themes. Um, but, yeah. It's a fantastic show and one I'm glad I finally sat down and watched. So that was the first one that, that I um, show that I've finished. Then I watched um, again, which I've mentioned a few times now. By any means, very underrated crime drama that sadly got cancelled after one season and ended on a cliffhanger. But this is, um, yeah, like a group of like a team who work outside the law to bring criminals to justice. So, which I've been told is like Leverage, but as I mentioned in the, my previous video, um, I haven't seen Leverage, so, but, which it is on my radar. I do have plans to eventually watch it, but I've got too many other shows to watch then, um, in the meantime. And then one of my other biggest loves that I've discovered in, in the, um, last, like, few months is Death in Paradise. 
I binge watched 12 series of this show. Um, again, on, seasons are on the shorter side because they're eight episodes, but I love this show so much and it's still, um, I'm still very upset about a particular death that happens on this show. I was not expecting it. I knew the actor left, but yes, it was very shocking to me and it's still probably one of the most fiction, like, um, upset I've been about a fictional death on a TV show for a while. So, um, but yes, once I sort of, um, I, cause I love, um, actually all the DIs who have come in for the show. Like I mainly started watching this because uh, Ben Miller was in the first couple of series, but I quickly grown attached to like all the characters and I want to keep watching, but again, I'll wait till, um, cause I think, cause I know there is a, like, I think there's like series 13 and 14 have been approved, like all greenlit. So I'll watch them once, um, like the whole season's out. So and then I watched Collision, which was a five-part uh, TV show uh, with Jungle Central playing another DI. Apparently he likes playing DIs, but um, anyway, he's investigating a collision on a highway and all the, um, like, sort of piecing together what happened, why everyone was at that particular moment on that highway, and it was very fascinating. And, like, he's got a lot going on in his personal life as well sort of trying to come back to uh, work after a tragedy and yeah it's um it was very um, fascinating to watch so and then another favorite discovery I watched Alice uh, which is uh, the sci-fi uh, miniseries with Andrew Lee Potts as the Mad Hatter loved everything about this adaptation it was oh I loved it I loved Andrew Lee Potts as the as um the Mad Hatter he was like he was perfect for this role and yeah like it had a great cast um i loved this ad like the adaptation like the um the different take on the alice in wonderland story yes it was it was amazing and i can't already can't wait to rewatch that one that's definitely one that i'm going to be rewatching. and then speaking of death in paradise i checked out the spin-off beyond paradise because um this has Oh, Humphrey. I couldn't think of his name there. I was like, what character did Chris uh, Marshall play? And I was like, he, um, this has uh, Humphrey Goodman, that's his character's name, um, as the, like, he's with his fiance and they've moved to um, the coast and it's sort of them trying to, you know, become a, like, they want to um, have a family. They've got a lot going on. Um, and yeah, it was a very, I actually really liked this one, not as much as Death in Paradise, but it's a show I definitely do want to keep watching. So, um, it was Beyond Paradise. And then I watched a few shows with Doug Potential in them, of course. <laughs> I watched this three part TV show called The Secrets of Crickly Crackly Hall. Um, this was a very creepy, intense watch, and I don't think it's one that. I'm going to be able to revisit because um, when I watched this, I was actually home alone and yeah, that was a very bad idea. <laughs> I could not sleep after that. Um, I watched this and he plays a very different character in this. Again, he's the bad guy and it's, um, yeah, it deals with a lot of very dark themes and because it sort of follows two dual storylines, like one that happens in the past where with um, Douglas Central's character and what he did to the kids who were in his care. Um, it's very dark um, and yeah, just sort of, because what happens in that one also impacts um, the family in the present day and that because they move, because they've suffered a tragedy and they've moved away to this um, like old place and of course it's like it's haunted with what happened back in the Second World War. And yeah, very dark, very, very creepy, but it was very good. Just not one that I think I'm going to revisit in the future. And speaking of ones that I don't think I'm going to revisit either, I watched In Plain Sight, which was about um, a serial killer in Scotland and the efforts it took to finally um, bring him to justice because 
it was sort of a case of where they knew who it was, but there wasn't enough evidence to prosecute and convict him. And Douglas Henschel, again, plays the DI involved in this case. And yeah, because the first episode alone, it was very hard to watch because it involved... Um, because it sort of showed how he, the killer escalated because he sort of started off committing sexual crimes and then it just sort of went from, like, to murders and that whole court case was made me very angry <laughs> and just watching it and I was just like, I don't, it, it was good but it's like, again, don't think I'm going to rewatch it. So, um, that was in plain sight. And then, so there's something a little bit different. I watched this reality TV show called Churchill's Secret Agents, uh, The New Recruits, which is on Netflix. Um, this was a reality show where they put these um, contestants through um, the regime of joining, um, like, like the not the Secret Service, or what was the, like, the World War II agents in... Um, like to see if they would pass the program and get accepted and like basically going through spy school and essentially and this was very fascinating Douglas Henschel narrates this so it's sort of the um, he's talking about the history about the program and World War II and yeah it was very fascinating um, so I'm glad I watched that those ones and then um, so for something this was I wasn't planning on watching this show at all, but I kept seeing clips on Facebook and it was looks very funny, and like my kind of humour. And after watching so many dark things, I was like, I need something very light. So I watched series one to three of The Windsors, which is like a very soap opera-ish um, like, depiction of the royal family. Like it's the Windsor royal family. Like, so you've got Charles and Camilla, and Prince William, Kate, um, the ki like, because at the time, um, the qu the um, Queen and Prince Philip were still alive, but they were off screen. You didn't see them. Um, you occasionally heard from Prince Philip through letters and stuff, which was hilarious when that, that did happen. But yeah, it was just very much um, Charles and Camilla and all the antics about like um, with the royal family and them trying to stay relevant and everything going on. Like, and then it's like they introduced um, like Meg into the storyline. And yeah, it was... Yeah, very easy show to binge. Entirely ridiculous, but I really loved it. So, um, I watched three uh, seasons of The Windsors. I think there's a fourth one coming as well, but um, I'll probably end up checking that one out as well. And then I finally finished watching Andor. I know I'm like a million years behind all the Star Wars stuff. I've caught up with The Mandalorian. Um, and that's about it. I'm... I've got so much Disney stuff to watch. It's not, it's not funny. Um, I just yeah fell behind. Like I haven't even been watching Secret Invasion, even though I have been spoiled pretty much for the main reveals. But um, I just yeah, I'm just finding I can't watch TV shows weekly now. Now that I've gotten into the habit of just binging, so I finished Andor. Um, I really liked it. It was even though when it got to the ending, I was thought there was still a couple more episodes, so I was like. Oh, I think that's the ending. So I did really enjoy it. I really, um, sort of like seeing the beginnings of like, um, with the rebellion and trying to land a blow against the empire. I thought it was, um, the politics was very fascinating. Um, like just sort of trying to see everyone trying to, like, um, to, you know, stay, um, like, like, trying their best to survive, but also trying to fight back against the Empire. And, yeah, it was... I really enjoyed the show. Um, I think they said there was going to be a season two. So, um, at some point, I will check that out whenever that gets made. But, um, yes, I'm glad I finally finished that. I think I started that at the end of last year, and it just took me forever to actually watch it. So, uh, it's another show I finally... Uh, finished and then I sort of went back to some British crime drama and I watched Professor T. So I know there's a Belgian, like this was originally a Belgian TV show and it was adapted. Um, haven't seen the original but I wanted to watch the British adaptation because Ben Miller uh, plays uh, Professor Tempest. And this was a very interesting show because um, 
just sort of seen him because he's he's a criminology uh, professor and he consults um, with the police and he's just sort of seen how he comes like figures things out and just how his mind works and yeah it's he's a very different character but it's um just sort of seeing his interactions with those around him and everything and yeah I really enjoy this also Juliet Aubrey is in this show as well she plays the DCI I think's the higher up in the or she's like the um person in charge overall like of their team um because you have like the detective sergeants you have the di and then you i'm pretty sure she's the dci but i'm not 100 percent sure um which you think after all this um with all the british crime shows i've been watching i'd be more familiar with the ranks of um the officers but anyway she and the professor had a like a past and they're sort of still trying to navigate their feelings because um yeah and just sort of seeing how complicated everything is in Professor Tempest's life and he's yeah it's just um a very fascinating show and I will be checking out season three when that comes out and then I was able to um I've been wanting to watch this show for a while since I started making my way through Douglas Henschel's um like um, like his back catalogue and I came across this one of the early shows that he did called Psychos and it's only available on Channel 4 in the UK. I had found a way to access that and I watched the six episodes. Um, this show was very controversial when it first um, aired and I don't think it would be as controversial today given you know all the content on TV. Um, I feel like it would be pretty tame compared to a lot of that's um, like on what's TV, what's on TV nowadays. Um, it was meant to get a second season, but because of the complaints, they didn't go ahead with it. And this was another case where the TV show ended on a massive cliffhanger. Because I've seen, I get caught up with all these characters, and I care about the characters, and something hap like something major happens, and I'm like, I want to know what happens, and there's no more episodes, so. <laughs> Yes, that was another show where I was like, but it can't end there. There's no more scenes. Like, th that's it. It was because this was done in like '99, so, um, and yeah, not many people know about. It, even though there's quite a few um, actors in here that I was like, aside from Douglas Henschel, because you had uh, Neve McIntosh, uh, she was in Doctor Who, um, Nako Mori, I think is how you say her name. Uh, who played Tosh in Torchwood, she's in this, um, Peter Capaldi makes an appearance in the last episode, so, so you have, like, this really, these fantastic scenes with, um, Peter Capaldi and Douglas Henschel, and it's everything, so, um, like, you know, two of my favourite Scottish actors, and they're in a scene together, so, anyway, I watched Psycho, it was very sad that it got cancelled, but that's the problem when you discover TV shows that aired 20 years ago. <laughs> Even though, to be fair, I was 12 in 1999, so I don't think it, there was no way that show would have been on my, on my radar or I would have been allowed to watch it anyway, so, um, yes, it was like, because, yeah, the, um, subject matter in this is very graphic and it's not a show I could really recommend to everybody because, um, like, so many trigger warnings in the show, like, because obviously it's, um, takes place in a mental hospital and yeah it's a lot of that was why there were so many complaints that were made and I was like I just I want people to watch it but at the same time I was like I don't feel that I could recommend it so um but it was a very good show I'm just sad it ended um with with only six episodes and it ended on a massive cliffhanger so and then we get to the last of the shows that I finished binging and for this ep for this video and that is Good Omens series one and series two and it's completely reignited my love of Good Omens. Series two was everything because I rewatched series one because it had been I hadn't seen it since it first aired so like 2019. Um, series two emotionally destroyed me and it's why it took so long for me to find another TV show that I wanted to watch because I was like I had such a 
well, almost, I know because when you finish a book, it's like they say it's like you get a book hangover. The same thing happened with the TV show. I was just like, but I don't know what I want to watch after that. And then, yeah, because I was just spending days thinking about it and I was on Tumblr and, yeah, my, like, um, just reblogging everything to do with the Good, o Good Omens and, yeah, it's that that ending. <laughs> I need to series three. <laughs> I need to find out what happens. Um, but, oh, that broke my heart. <laughs> It is like, yeah, just because, yeah, I love um, David Tennant and Michael Sheen in Michael, Sh yeah, I'm just going to say, wait, I think it's Michael Sheen. <laughs> I have to Google his name. <laughs> yeah, Michael Sheen, it was it was the name because I keep getting him, yeah, it was, I keep wanting to say it's like Michael Sheen or Michael Shannon and then it's like, no, Michael Sheen. Um, uh, everything and I love the portrayal of Crowley and Aziraphale and yeah I really like I liked that um because I think this was really the series two is where I understood the hype for their relationship and yeah they're like one of my favorite OTPs now and well depending on how series three goes <laughs> Because, yeah, that kind of broke my, as I said, it broke my heart and hasn't quite recovered and I haven't been, I have since started watching a new show, well, not a new show, it's one where, like, a few seasons are, like, will be a rewatch and then the last season will be a first time viewing, but I will talk about that the next time I do um, one of these videos, but, yes, it's, um, without spoilers, Series 2 of Good Omens was completely devastating and I really want to reread the book now. But I don't know where my copy of the book is. It's in one of the boxes somewhere. <laughs> so I guess there's a lot of boxes. Um, but anyway, I'm just going to stop it here because otherwise I will keep fangirling and rambling and we'll be here forever. So I'm going to stop it here. Thank you guys for watching and until my next video, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.